Some people think they don't want realism at all, rule of cool all the way. But tell me that historical fighting stances don't look cool. This is without a doubt one of the best fictional sword fight scenes I've ever seen. And I want to talk about it. So this is a cinematic duel of Messer versus Messer. If you're not familiar with this type of weapon, I'm going to link my own video about it in the description below, along, of course, with a link to this video. I'm not going to show you all of it because this is not my own work and I want you to actually watch that. It's set in the Renaissance titled Laurus Nobilis, and there are some things I definitely want to comment on particularly how much storytelling it does by showing us instead of telling us. You know, rather than giving us long exposition, there are certain things that you can gain from this scene just by seeing the body language and facial expression. So this guy is obviously preparing for a duel with his trainer. You can tell that he's not happy with his progress. He has some doubts about his abilities, which going into a duel to the death or even just to first blood obviously is a huge concern. The fencing master who trains him also seems to act as a second in this duel. If you want to know more about the dynamics of historical duels, I've got a video about that as well. So here they tell us something about his opponent just from the way he's drawing the messer. Look at this hot-headed cocky bastard. The way he just rips the messer out of the scabbard as he struts forward, that tells you something about his character, without a single word being said. And then the way he rushes him immediately, and the other guy looks off to the side like, whoa, what the hell? Like this shows you that there was supposed to be another, you know, formalized step. It tells you that he wasn't supposed to just rush at him straight on without looking if he's ready. So again, that tells you something about the opponent and paints him as a bit of a villain here. So there's a lot going on here, but as opposed to the usual Hollywood wild flailing and bashing, this all serves a purpose. You can see here that the guy in gray uses the, the spine of his blade to beat the opponent's messer out of the way and then to try to either cut or thrust, which the other guy catches just in time. And even this serves a purpose. It may not look like it at first because he attacks when he's clearly out of reach, but the idea is to gauge what the opponent does. He wants to know, you know what the default reaction is, which he sees right here. Because you don't really want to immediately rush in recklessly at a range where you can be hit. Because if you misjudge your opponent or mistime something, that's it immediately. You want to get a feel for, okay, what kind of fighter is this? How does he act? Here he moves in to within his measure. So now he can actually threaten his opponent and does. The opponent blocks it with the flat and then goes to grapple. He pushes his elbow. That's shown in the historical manuscripts quite a bit. And then we have what I like to call an oh shit moment, where he was not ready for the follow-up attack, so all he can do is just move his face out of the way to prevent it from being cut. You know, which is not ideal, because dodging like this while your weapon is behind you, basically, puts you at a disadvantage because now the opponent can push the offense, take initiative, and you're not doing anything to stop them or threaten them. And you know what? Shit happens, especially if you're not as confident. And again, they're showing you what kind of guy this is. Like, he's frustrated that he didn't end it just like that. He's like, oh man, this guy is more skilled than I thought. And you can see his confidence is shaken. So what does he do? Well, fight dirty. <laughs> now, arguably, there is no such thing as dirty fighting when you're fighting for your life, which is absolutely true. But it is kind of rude to stand there with your back toward your opponent, signaling, hey, I need a minute, and then just turning around and immediately attacking without signaling first, let's continue. In a formal duel, that's pretty rude and dishonorable. So this downward cut, 
The other guy deflects and immediately counters. That's being blocked as well. And then we've got some more back and forth, cuts and parries, which is something that happens a lot. Now here, this is another historical technique right there. This sort of block while you already have your arm outstretched and you grab the opponent's arm to prevent him from using this, the sword. And, uh, you know, here there would be a chance to finish him off by cutting at him, but the other guy counter grapples and gets out of the way of the cut and uh, takes a hold of his arm, uses his own messer to reinforce the grip and get more leverage. And so now they're, they're grappling here. He gets out of the, the kerfuffle. Some people think they don't want realism at all. Rule of cool all the way. But tell me that historical fighting stances don't look cool. Like then we can look at this and you'd be like, yeah, this looks boring. I'd rather see people staggering around clumsily doing huge telegraphed swings. I mean, really? This is neat too. The opponent tries a false edge displacement to open him up, but he's like, no, you don't. Circles around with a blade to get it out of the way so he can move freely. And uh, yeah, I don't really want to show you much more because this is not a super long video. I've already shown you quite a bit. So this is a supreme example that many filmmakers should take note of if they're gonna make a historical movie. You know, if you want to do fantasy, whatever, knock yourself out. You can have people fly through the air and use magic and do all sorts of silly maneuvers that look cool. But actual historical settings is so often butchered by movies and TV shows, even if they refer to specific time frames and personalities, they still go right ahead and display the worst examples of studded leather and fur rags and horrible wall hangers and ridiculous helmets and all of that. So this is really refreshing to see that somebody actually cares enough to research and represent history properly while still being extremely entertaining. In terms of cinematography, this is a fantastic example. You know, camera angles, by the way, no shaky shots and constant jump cuts. This is actually not just watchable, but enjoyable. And it's smooth, it looks cool. Like what more could you ask for, right? So yeah, go watch this right now. Just wanted to let you know about that. Hope you found it interesting. Thanks for watching and take care, folks.